Hello, and welcome to Easy English Interviews, the podcast for English language learning. My name is Chris Kent. I'm an associate professor of English as a Second Language in Japan. And in this podcast, I interview interesting people in easy English so English students can practice their listening comprehension skills. Please enjoy listening to the interviews, and if you would like to check your comprehension, please look at the questions in the podcast episode notes. Or go to kjkentmsed.substack.com and click on the post for this episode. There, you can subscribe to my Substack and receive email notifications whenever a new interview is released. Interview を楽しみください。理解度を確認したい場合は、ポッドキャストノートの質問を見るか、URL kjkentmsed.substack.com にアクセスして、このエピソードをクリックしてください。そこで私のサブスタックをサブスクライブして、新しいインタビューがリリースされるたびに電子メール通知を受け取ることができます。OK。And now for the easy English interview. Okay, so today I'm here with another one of my good friends, Walter Ichikawa Doyle. So, Walter, thank you for being here today. Oh, my pleasure. So, I guess, you know, we're going to talk a little bit about your experiences here in Japan, but please just、uh, relax,、uh, have a good time, and、uh, everything will go well. My first question for you is going to be about why you came to Japan. So, could you tell us a little bit about why you came here in the first place and how you got to where you are now? Sure. I came to Japan for the first time in 1998. I actually came to watch the Nagano Winter Olympics. Ah, yeah. I, at the time, I was living in South Korea. I was teaching English there. And I had been there for about a year and a half. Originally intended to only be there for a year. I left Canada with the intention of investigating the Korean short track speed skating program.、Oh, okay. I was coaching in Canada short track speed skating. So I was quite interested in what they were doing because they were suddenly having a lot of success. And I kind of wanted to see well, what are they doing?、Hmm. And I was also investigating the idea of possibly going back to school to get an education degree and be a classroom teacher back in Canada. So I thought,、oh, okay, I'll go abroad for a year. And see how that goes. And of course, a year turned into a year and a half in Korea, and then I came to the Olympics. And while I was here in Nagano during the Olympics, I met a number of non Japanese residents who had been here.、Mm-hmm. And one in particular told me after the Olympics, he's leaving.、Mm-hmm. And he, he was here as an English teacher, but he also had a side job or side gig、mm-hmm. as. A girls' ice hockey coach. Okay. And I was like, quite intrigued by that.、Mm. And he said, and he's going to be leaving after the Olympics and he's looking for someone to take over. And of course, as I said, I had been coaching some speed skating in Canada. So I was used to coaching kids.、Mm-hmm. I played ice hockey to a fairly decent level in Canada. I thought, hmm, that might be kind of fun. And there were all these new facilities、mm-hmm. that had been built for the Olympics. So. Right, right. I returned to Korea, kind of packed up my bags, and within a month I was back living in Nagano.、Hmm. That was in March of 1998. And,、uh, and we all know what day it is today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember those Olympics. I, was, I had been in Japan for about three years at that time,、okay. and I came to Nagano to, to watch Canada play hockey. And、uh, at that time was my first time to see Nagano and to experience what it's like here. And I, at that time, it's interesting. I didn't know I'd be moving here in the future, but、um, looking back on it now, I was very impressed with Nagano. Yeah, and my, my brother actually was with me in Korea. We, we both kind of felt the same way. We,、mm. we really liked what we saw while we were here. The sports facilities that they built for the Olympics were, you know, at the time, world class.、Mm. And so 
the opportunity to come back um, was quite appealing. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, one of your previous interviews, and maybe even one of your first, Ian Davidson, mm -hmm. he was here at the time, and my brother and I did meet him, and he told my brother he was going to be leaving after the Olympics for a short period of time as well and was looking for someone to kind of take over for him mm. as a substitute teacher in a sense. Mm. And so my brother also came with me from Korea. So mm. we both moved to Nagano. Oh, wow. He worked for E and I, I worked another job. And, uh, yeah. Cool, cool. That's interesting. It's very different from some of the other stories that I've heard so far in the podcast. Um, my next question for you then is, uh, could you tell me a little bit about what you studied before you came to Japan? So what did you study in college or what were you doing before you came? Sure. Um, as I mentioned, uh, prior to coming to Japan, I was actually thinking about going back to university and possibly getting an education degree. Mm -hmm. I had completed a three-year Bachelor of Arts degree. I specialized in English literature and minored in theology, mm -hmm. studying religions. And then I realized that I wasn't, there wasn't really anything I wanted to do with that. So I went back to school right afterwards. I basically continued on. I did another three years at a different school where I did a tourism management diploma. Um, so the idea of marketing and hotel administration mm -hmm. and so on, working in the hospitality industry, uh, not necessarily training to be a chef or you know, front desk staff or anything, but more in the management capacity and tourism development. And, uh, so I started working a little bit in that field and eventually made my way back to my home town mm -hmm. and was looking for work in that area but wasn't finding anything. I did find a position teaching a hotel and management course at the community college. Ah, oh, I see. So I did that for a few years. And um, then that kind of piqued my interest in education. Mm -hmm. And so then I started thinking about going back to school to do education. Mm -hmm. At the time in Canada, I was involved with short track speed skating as well. So I had a few different things happening and I was mm -hmm. kind of looking for a direction I was in my early twenties and, yeah. uh, you know, what, what, what should I do? Or I guess actually by that time I was in my late twenties. Mm. Yeah. I think it's a common theme that a lot of people who end up here in Japan, they are, you know, generally preparing for something else, but then they decide they want to either travel or they want to try something over here. They get here and realize that actually what they had studied before prepared them quite well for mm. what they would need here. Yeah. And that's why they stay. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, the, the English, of course, what, that I had done in university was good. I also found that the tourism management stuff that I had studied was, was useful when I came abroad because it gave me a sense of, of how to deal with a lot of issues that you dealt with as a, as a non, as a foreigner in the, in the communities right. that you're living in. Uh, particularly in Korea, that was a, a very interesting experience. It was my first time living in Asia. Uh, so there were a lot of new things, but as I said, being a little bit older and, and being able to, to look at things from a, a more mature perspective kind of helped me deal with some of the issues and stuff. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it, it, the bottom line of it was I was thinking to go back and get an education degree, but instead ended up staying here as a, Mm -hmm. as a teacher for a few more years. Anyway. Okay. And so what are you doing now? Uh, well, now um, I work primarily on a consulting basis. Mm -hmm. um, I, work, I taught for quite a few years and then married, um, had kids, and became an at-home dad. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife's work was more lucrative than, than what I was doing as an English teacher. Right. We thought it was important that we have someone home with the kids. So mm -hmm. she, she went back to work and I stayed home with the kids. Mm. Um, and these days I, I work with um, one of the high schools on, on a consulting basis, uh, doing global relationships, talking mm -hmm. to universities and schools abroad and trying to start connections and, and relationships with those schools so that our graduates have more opportunities to go abroad or to continue their education. Yeah, I think it's something that is very important that, you know, the schools in Japan don't become too insulated. So in other words, they are, you know, making connections to not only like one school overseas, like a sister school, but like multiple schools. Yeah. So they can, you know, provide overseas programs in 
you know, Asia, Southeast Asia, North America, Europe, you know. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's quite interesting as well. Like, I, I get to travel with the work as well. So that, mm. that's always fun. We mm-hmm. recently came back from Spain and mm-hmm. uh, I was in France. I was there with my daughter, but at the same time, I was investigating some opportunities mm-hmm. in, in France and, uh, of course, Canada and yeah. the Philippines. Yeah. Well, I think any job where you're able to travel, you know, it, even though you're working, it's mm-hmm. still nice to see the world a bit when you're sure. when you're working. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Okay, so a little bit uh, back into your history. But when you were young, you know, before you became serious, uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? <laughs> it's it's funny that that, that you ask that question mm-hmm. because I, I I sometimes think about that myself, and mm-hmm. uh, obviously, as I mentioned earlier, I played some hockey to mm-hmm. to a, a fairly high level and that's always something in the back of your mind I think as a, as a Canadian youth that mm-hmm. you'd like to be a professional ice hockey player right uh, but at the same time I I, I I kind of became realistic with myself at the end of uh, as, as I finished started to finish high school um, and, and then now when I when I think well, what did I want to do like, I, I'm not sure if I had anything particular hmm. Um my father was a teacher. Mm-hmm. He went on to become an elementary school principal for a number of years. And I often think that that, that was something that I was probably looking at. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I did enjoy the coaching short track speed skating. And I acquired my national coaching certification mm-hmm. to a fairly high level. Right. So I, um, I was even looking at possibly working as a, a coach mm-hmm. for uh, in sports. So... Um, I guess as, as a youth, I didn't focus too much beyond maybe being a hockey player. <laughs> and then as I started to get older, I looked at more options. Right. So. Yeah, I think we're all the same. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to talk now about your experiences in Japan a bit more. Uh, namely, um, what places have you visited that you really liked in Japan? Um, I've traveled... A fair bit across Japan. I feel I've been very fortunate. I've been down south in uh, Okinawa and a couple of the other islands down there. I've gone all the way up to Hokkaido. Mm-hmm. Um, just after getting married, my parents were here when I got married, and I took them traveling. And we went down as far as Fukushima, or uh, sorry, Fukuoka, Fukuoka, yeah. and through Kyushu and uh, Kumamoto and all up to uh, Yamaguchi, which I, I enjoyed actually bringing my father to Yamaguchi because he's a graduate of St. Francis Xavier University in Canada. Ah. And St. Francis mm-hmm. Xavier was actually in Yamaguchi for, yeah. for a short period of time. So mm-hmm. in, my father enjoyed that. But I, I think I took my kids to, and I, I can't remember the name correctly, it's either Tokutami or Tom, Tomutake mm-hmm. Island mm-hmm. near Okinawa. Uh-huh. And very... Um, what you call it? Um, the, the word is escaping me now, but a very uh, southern island. Like tropical. Tropical, type. thank you. Yeah, yes, yeah tropical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that island. It was, mm. it was, it was quite interesting. And, and my kids were probably eight, seven and nine at the time. And so they really enjoyed being able to run around mm. and explore the island as well. And we rented bicycles and stuff. So, mm. and they had the ox cart that toured people around the island. Right. Stuff, right. So. Yeah. I think, you know, those type. you know, there's so many of those types of islands in that area, that whole chain from Kagoshima down to Okinawa. Mm. And you can almost like find your own island that you like and, <laughs> yeah, and visit yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Mm-hmm. I, I, as you say, because even now I notice on Facebook that some of the islands have their own advertising now. And oh, wow. They're, they're promoting themselves as a, mm. as a destination, which I, I don't remember seeing much of in the past. Yeah. yeah. Now with social media and stuff, they're, they're able to promote themselves that way. Mm, cool. Okay. Um, and how about the culture? Is there anything particular that you like about Japanese culture? Um, obviously, you know, like myself, you've been here a long time, so there must be something you enjoy about the culture. Um, I appreciate how hospitable the people are in general, mm-hmm. um, but I think that, uh, as, as far as what I like most about Japan, mm-hmm. living in Japan, is is the sense of safety that you have. Ah, oh, true. Yeah. yeah. Now I have heard a different perspective mm-hmm. from females, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. 
and that and that's quite interesting. Again, that's a cultural thing, I think, because yeah. the, the Japanese is more of a male dominated society. Right, right. Um, so, so men kind of tend to feel a little mm-hmm. safer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but even with my own children, um, particularly in Nagano, there's, it's, it's, it's quite safe. Yeah. Uh, but the, the people are generally very friendly and, and quite welcoming. In, yeah. in in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was going to say, that's like, I think, you know, that would be my answer as well as the, the hospitality. Right. I never thought of the safety factor, but actually, yeah, it's true. I remember living in Tokyo um, for eight years. I mean, it's one of the biggest cities in the world, and I never once felt scared walking around even at nighttime. Exactly. In yeah. any area of exactly. the city. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, in the same way, whenever I visit Tokyo, mm. I, I will be out, you know, as late as I feel, I, mm. and, and I never fear, have any fear of, where, whereas when I return to even Canada, which mm. is also a, a quite a safe country, mm. in some of the bigger cities, I, there, there are areas I don't want to be in. Right. I don't want to be out by myself too late at night and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, how about your, your hobbies? What is it that you do now when you have free time? I know you're very busy, but when you do get some free time, what do you like to do? I, I would say the, the, the my main hobby these days would probably be photography. Mm. Um, mm. I, I, this year, I, it hasn't been as active as I would mm. have liked. Uh, but yeah, I, I enjoy photography. I, I like, uh, I love getting out in the winter in mm. Nagano and mm. photographing the mountains and around Hakuba and stuff. And there's some wonderful places and I'm looking forward to the fall as it approaches and yeah. you know, the changing of the colors. And I was going to say, you know, the, the fall is some of the best times. I think I can imagine any one of many different areas around here where you get beautiful, you know, red and yellow leaves and fall colors. So, yeah. Okay. That's yeah, interesting. And I, I know you, you're quite a good photographer yourself as well. I, I've seen some of your pictures that you I try <laughs> <laughs> so I guess when, when in, in relation to my hobbies it, photography would probably be the one that I'm most interested in mm-hmm. these days but of course I enjoy sports as well and right I'm getting, I'm in fact just returning from playing golf today for the first time in about three years though so I, I can't mm-hmm. necessarily say it's a hobby <laughs> Well, I think golf is one of those hobbies that you can always come back to, um, yeah. but it's it's hard to get out that often these days. It yeah. is, it is, yeah. yeah. Um, I guess, do you, uh, my next question would be to ask about family. So, mm-hmm. do you have, you talked about your kids, and yes. um, could you tell me just a little bit about your family here in Japan? Sure. Um, I, my my wife works here in Nagano. Mm-hmm. She, she's uh, quite active in the community and mm-hmm. she, she's a medical doctor and mm-hmm. she's kind of well known for that and she's also a chairman of the board for the local high schools and education foundations mm-hmm. um, my children are both kind of older now my daughter mm-hmm. actually is in her first year university this year she's in, studying in France and my son is in his last year of high school and uh, for high school, he wanted to study in Canada, mm-hmm. and so uh, he's actually in Canada during his last year of high school. So, I see. a son and a daughter and a wife. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I think I remember. I saw her. Your wife ran in the torch relay for the Tokyo Olympics, did she not? That's correct. She did. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. That must have been a wonderful experience for it, her. It was. Yeah, yeah, it was very interesting. Mm. And, um, it, it's unfortunate, that, of course, that the Olympics got delayed the year, but, right. um, mm. but she was able to do it in the end. And mm. uh, yeah, it was quite. Exciting. Exciting, and she she ha- had the opportunity to run past one of the local kindergartens that falls under their educational foundation. So all uh-huh. the students were out and waving <laughs> flags and stuff. So it was quite exciting, and a great experience. Yeah, that must have been really cool to see. Okay, my last question for you is: um, Do you have any advice for students that are studying English? Because the people who listen to this podcast are all trying to get better. Um, and as an expert in the field, I always like to ask my guests um, what it is that they suggest students do. It's an interesting question because, of course, you know, what should I do to improve my English? Well, study, of course, is is kind of the the, the, the basic answer. But how to study? And I think. I, I always encourage people to talk more, mm. have more actual conversations with people, regardless of how good your level is. Mm. The more you can speak, mm. the better your skill is going to be. And that, and that goes across the board, I think, in any language. Right. Um, I often struggle with the Japanese language. It's not, I'm not that fluent. 
I've been here for a number of years mm. and uh, should be more fluent than I am. But I, I, I think one of the reasons is that I spent a lot of time at home with my kids and mm. spoke English. Right. And my wife is fluent in English and mm. we speak English together. Mm. Uh, so the more opportunities to speak, mm. the, the better your skill will get. Yeah, I agree. I think the reason why is because, you know, speaking any language is kind of, in a way, it's kind of like sports. If you don't practice it, then you're not going to get better at it, right? And exactly. So you need to keep forcing your, your brain to do that output. And it's making that connection every time to the word you need at the right time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, that will help you to be able to use it whenever you need it. Right? Yeah. I had that experience actually last month when mm. I took my daughter to France to, mm. to get her set up. Of course, as Canadians, we, we, we studied French growing up. Right. And uh, I found it quite interesting trying to speak French. Mm. And a lot of times the right word that came to my head was the Japanese word. For, yeah, of course. For something. Yeah. <laughs> um, but the more I, I started using the French, mm. the more it started to come back. Right. And, and then I returned to Japan. Mm. And of course, the reverse happens. And I start thinking <laughs> as, a, as, a, as a second language, <laughs> French starts coming. It's like so, a reverse language shock. Yeah. 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 Mm. So... Uh, yeah, the more you use the language, the more it's going to develop as, as a skill for you and, and the more fluent you'll become with it. Okay, well, thank you for that advice. And that's it for the interview. So I want to thank you very much for coming here today. And I know, like you said, you were playing golf, but still to get off the course and to come here and talk to me was uh, a wonderful thing. So thank you very much. No, my pleasure. I really enjoyed it. I, I appreciate what you're doing here and making this available to so many English learners, it's a, it's a great program. Well, yeah, and I hope that uh, students will take advantage of it um, mm. because, like you say, the podcasts are free. And um, if somebody wants to, you know, make studying their habit, they could listen to these podcasts as something, you know, a once a week type of thing. So, yeah, well, thank you very much again, Walter, and I hope to talk to you again in the future. Okay, Chris, take care. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Walter Ichikawa Doyle, and I would like to say thank you very much for listening. Also, I hope that you will try the comprehension questions when you have free time so you can check your listening ability in English. And please, if you would like to be notified by email whenever a new podcast is up, please become a subscriber at kjkentmsed.substack.com. That's k-j-k-e-n-t-m-s-e-d dot s-u-b-s-t-a-c-k dot com. If you become a paid subscriber there, you can read transcripts of the interviews and check your comprehension answers. You can also check out Easy English Interviews now at easyenglishinterviews.locals, L-O-C-A-L-S, dot com. All right, thank you again and see you next time when we will speak with another interesting person. Bye-bye from Easy English Interviews.